Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise TNA. I wanted to showcase a really unique insight today. Uh, this came up uh, through or, or via the Enterprise DNA support forum. So this is where Enterprise DNA members uh, can ask for assistance on particular questions. Now this one was really unique, and, I, and as soon as I, I, I heard it, I thought, "Wow, that's really cool." I mean, you could actually you could really do this in Power BI and um, and showcase it in a really compelling way. Now the question was, how can we compare the current month? So the sales in any particular month or any sort of metric, doesn't have to be sales. How can we compare this to the best month that has been prior to that particular month? So think about what we have to do there. We need to find a calculation that, and I've already done it here, I'm just going to show you how I did it. We need to find a calculation that for every single month as we move down the table, it will continually evaluate the current month and every month prior to that and say what is the highest amount that we have seen up until that point what is the highest sales we have seen up until that point and so you see here that it actually looks back uh, the first uh, uh, result we have is in February here and it looks back and evaluates this uh, first result and the second result uh, well actually it only, only evaluates the first result and it returns the highest number. And as we move on down, you'll see here that we get to June 2015, and you'll see that uh, the that is now higher, or that result is higher than the previous one, and so then that becomes the highest, and so on and so forth. So pretty cool insight, right? Pretty cool insight. Now, the trick here is how do we create this calculation here? Because doing the comparison is not that difficult, working out the percentage. As soon as we can calculate this number, then we can do this pretty easily because it's just going to be um, the difference between these two divided by that. That's all That's all that is. Now, how do we calculate this? So this is the formula. This is the pattern, if you like, of how in any particular month we can evaluate what is the, the highest month we have had up until that point. Now, we want to calculate total sales, right? But the whole thing here is that we need to totally, we need to totally change the context of the calculation. And in this case, what we're going to do, if you think about it, we need to create a context which evaluates every single month that has happened before that particular month. So that's the first thing that you need to work out. Well, how do we actually create this virtual table which only looks at months up until that point? And then from that point, we need to look at the sales and rank them, rank them from highest to lowest. And then from there, we want to only return the highest amount. So there's a few different things you've got to think about to actually achieve this, right? Now, how you actually wrap this up all into one formula is you place it into top end. So it's what top end allows you to do is it allows you to change the context, but from a ranking perspective. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to create a table of only one row because I've specified I only want one row here in the top end function. Now that row or the result in that row is going to be determined by the logic that we place uh, within it. And that logic, first of all, within that logic we need to create a table. We need to create a virtual table and that's where the virtual table of those months comes in. And this is what this filter function with summarize inside of here is actually doing. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we'll return a table and that's what summarize enables us to do, a virtual table of every single month and year and also this month in year column as well because what we can do with month in year in my date table, I'll show you in a second, is actually a number and so we can then actually run some logic uh, this month in year, this, this is actually an index column funnily enough for that month and year column because month and year is a text field, a text value, and this month and year is actually a numeric field. You'll see here it's a whole number. But what's great about this is we can evaluate through this number by going, uh, by showcasing, um, by by using say less than or, or using integers, right? And so what we can do by adding this into the virtual tables, I can then go, okay, well evaluate it through every single month and year and look at what that index column is and evaluate is it less than the min so less than the actual amount of uh, that particular uh, the sorry the index of that particular context and so this one is always going to return exactly the um, corresponding 
month and year index but this this one because it's within filter which is a um, an, iter an iterating table function we're going to iterate through every single month and year here so th there's a limit to this one I, I i totally understand but if you can understand how you create cumulative totals or uh or or, or you just use a filter statement you you will understand how important it is to to, to get this part right but basically if you just want to um, holistically think about what this is doing, this is for every single month actually creating a dynamic dynamic table which only looks at the months behind it, nothing in front of it, right? And then to finish off top end, what we need to do is we need to rank we need to rank every single one of these months within this virtual table based on a particular measure. In this case, obviously we want total sales, right? Because we only want to return the total the top sale up into that point, and so. By putting that measure inside of top end, what it's going to do is it's going to evaluate each of these month and years by to total sales, and descending is going to list them from top to bottom, one to whatever, right? And then, because we only actually want the top result, and we put one here, that is what is going to return only the one row ultimately. And that context is only going to be one row, and it's going to be the month with the highest number uh, or highest sales up into that point. And then from there, we're going to return that total sales. So pretty cool formula. And I've just realized if I actually put an equal signs in here, that's actually going to change things probably for the better, to be honest. You probably want to go less than or equal to because what that does is on that particular month. So let's look at June 2015 here. You'll see here that this is actually the new highest number. Well, that should then actually become the new highest previous sales month, right? So awesome, awesome pattern. I mean, love this stuff. Really, really love how... Uh, you know how powerful this analysis is right and um, we can do it all with one formula there's a little bit to understand inside this one formula you know context and how, making sure that you understand filter etc but if you can I mean think about it how you know how cool this analysis is um, and how you know how, how difficult this would have been would be in anything and any other tool or technology especially Excel and then from there all I did was I implemented some simple logic where I went total sales minus the highest previous sale so that's always going to give us the difference and then I divided that by the highest previous sale and then that is what you are go that is going to calculate what is the percentage difference between our previous best month so very unique insight very cool insight you know hopefully you can certainly you know, hopefully I'm hoping you can find some use for this I think I think there's some value in there somewhere uh, for this and even even if there isn't in this particular insight there's a lot of ways you can utilize this technique so hopefully you can understand it and start utilizing it okay I'm gonna round things off all the best um, hopefully you can use uh, this technique in your own models if you like the content um, really appreciate a like on the video that will be awesome and uh, certainly subscribe um, there's so much content uh, coming out from enterprise dna on on um, power bi and i really want to get that into your hands as quickly as possible so certainly subscribe to the uh, enterprise dna tv channel all the best and i'll look forward to speaking to you soon